Hello, welcome back to my channel. This time we will learn to add a system to Chinzy. I assume that you can create a database template. If you don't understand database templates, you can watch my previous video. As an example, we will create a system like the following database. I have copied the database for this exercise so that you can add more clarity to the system. Of course you still remember how to add variable nodes, right? If you forget, you can watch my previous video. To add a system, you can create it by right-clicking on the system and selecting New System. Enter the name of the system to be created. For the first time, I will create a positioning system. For example the name is GPS1. Select the appropriate driver settings for the positioning system. Set the appropriate COM port for GPS1. Since I don't have a real GPS system at the moment, I will use the positioning system simulator. Choose the antenna location for GPS1. We create this antenna location in the variable node. This node variable represents the actual offset position for each system. This offset position is calculated from the center of gravity of the vessel. If you don't know about this offset position, you should watch my previous video again. Add another new system. This time add GPS2 as secondary position. Do the same steps as before. Use the position simulator as before. Next we add a single beam echo sounder as a depth measuring tool. Select the driver that suits your system, and make sure the COM port used is appropriate. Because I don't have a real sensor, I will use a simulator for this single beam. Select the location of the single beam echo sounder pole position. Then add a multi-beam system. Like the previous step, namely adding a single beam echo sounder, select the multi-beam simulator because I don't have a real sensor at this time. Enter pitch, roll, and heave correction values if you know these values. For now I leave it blank. Also select the location of the multi-beam pole. Add another system, namely Euro. This system is used to reference vessel direction. Like the previous step, this time add the heading simulator driver. If you know the Euro correction, you can enter that value in the CO column. Before adding the USBL system, I will add the objects first. Right click on the object, then select new object. Select the object type, namely toad fish. Type in the name of the object. As an exercise, type the dimensions of the object you want to create. For example like this, edit the object according to your wishes. Add one more object, 
This time this object is a sub-bottom profiler. Select object type. You can choose the type as ROV object. Type the name of the object. Then, enter the dimensions of the object. This is just an example of object dimensions. Edit the object as you wish. Remember, we can also add variable nodes to the objects we create. But this time I will not create a variable node on the object. Now we add the USBL system. Select the system type which is USBL system. As with the previous system edition, since I don't have a sensor connected at this time, I chose USBL manual. But if you have a USBL connected system, you can choose the appropriate driver, then connect according to the right COM port. Select the transducer position. Select the USB pole variable node. If you know the system's USBL calibration values, you can enter those values. For now I leave the value blank. If you have a sound velocity value, enter that value. Then, select the USBL target. At this time, select the side scan sonar from the object that we created previously. Select the center of gravity from the side scan sonar. In original conditions, you must select the transponder ID installed on the side scan sonar so that the side scan sonar position is correct. However, because we are using a simulator, we cannot choose the transponder ID. Then we add another new system. This time we will add manual layback. For example, if you don't have a USB-L system, but you want to position the towing object behind the vessel, you can add layback. Add layback to the desired object. Type the name of the layback to be created, for example SBP layback. Select system layback as type. Then select manual layback. Select the main vessel as the system location. Select layback as the observation type. Select the node location on the vessel, namely the place where the object will be towed. Then select the object to be towed, this time select the center of gravity from SBP. Type the name of the observation. Add another layback system to the side scan sonar. Do the same thing as we added layback to SBP. But this time we will choose side scan sonar as the layback object. There's a reason why we added a layback system to side scan sonar. If we have problems with the USB-L system, we can use layback to position the side scan sonar. Now we will try online using the template database that we have created. Select the database that we created earlier as the active template. Then select the online button. In online mode, select computation setup. Select GPS-1 as the primary position. In height status, select unreliable height if you are using a DGPS system. But if you use an RTK system, choose high accurate RTK. Unreliable system means you will use external corrections such as tidal correlation and so on. Turn on the system USBL. Check use Z menu. You can see that currently the side scan sonar position is active using the positioning from the USBL system. We can simulate the USB-L range of the system in the driver input manual. If you use a real USB-L system, you don't need to do this. Because the side scan sonar position will be positioned in real time from the USB-L correctly according to conditions in the field.
Back to the Chinzy controller. This time we will turn on layback from SBP. Also check the Use Z menu. You can see that currently our layback system is active. The layback system is very useful when we don't have sensors in the water. We can adjust the towing distance from the stern of the ship. For the layback system, enter the distance as a positive value. In contrast to the distance for the USBL system where the position behind the vessel is negative. Now we will turn on the layback system of the side-scan sonar. In the case of our USB-L system experiencing problems, we can use a layback system provided we know how far the side-scan sonar is deployed. If we use a layback system, turn off the USB-L system. Do the same thing as we activated SBP layback. In the computation setup you can select what you want to use for rotation. If you don't have a depth or pressure sensor on the SSS fish you can set use Z to enable. The result is that the fish skims along the surface. With rotation we try to calculate the horizontal component. So in other words, where is the SSS fish relative to my vessel? Is it right behind me and what happens if the vessel is crabbing, is current coming in from the side? In Chinzi there are four options for this. 1. Main object heading. 2. Main Object COG 3. Toad Object Heading 4. Toad Object COG If we use the heading of the vessel for the rotation vector, this will mean that the SSS fish is always shown straight behind the vessel. If we use Main Object COG, then we take the COG of the vessel into account. So in case the vessel is crabbing due to a current the vessel heading and COG are not the same. In this case you could assume the SSS fish is also affected by the current. Note that the layback slant range should be a realistic value. If for example the slant range is shorter than the height offset between vessel tow point and MSL then the position cannot be resolved by the Chinzy computation. Height conflicts. When use Z is enabled then the RAV depth on the fish should be disabled and vice versa or else multiple height definitions will exist for the fish and the position cannot be resolved. Using the course over ground of the fish may result in a jumpy position of the fish when no filtering on the fish is used. Usually the best option for the horizontal rotation is the course over ground of the vessel. Note that when no compass is specified on the tow fish the fish heading option will also use COG. When the approximate position is far away from the real position and the computation doesn't cycle then you can try to increase the iteration threshold from 10 to 100 to get a fix. Whenever a new template is started, one computation is created with default settings. This computation needs to be checked to see if the settings are usable for this kind of survey. It is also possible to create a second, third, nth computation. When multiple position systems are available, multiple computations can be created, each computation using one position system. If there is more than one computation, set the computation priority, one being the highest. If the primary computation is not working correctly, Chinzi will automatically switch to the secondary system. Under certain circumstances data from an echo sounder can contain a lot of noise. Although noise should preferably be removed using filters on the echo sounder itself, this is not always possible. In order to clean the data Chinzi offers a number of online filters that can reject most of the larger spikes in the data. Use the table under, exclude data when, to set various filters. Plus the quick blocking tab. The echo sounder filters only affect the data that is stored in the sounding grid or in the DTM file. All depths will be stored in the database as raw depth. The sound velocity is needed to correct the depth readings from the echo sounder to true depths, 
depending on the echo sounder settings. Most echo sounders allow the input of a single sound velocity, whereas Chinzy is able to use the entire sound velocity profile as measured. To enter a sound velocity profile, select the velocity profile group to make the velocity profile dialog visible. I think that's enough for this tutorial. Please click the like button if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for videos from me.